morning, Cherishy Baptist Church. It's so good to see all of you guys. Please stand and join me in singing. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all the nations rise. Join the triumph of the good singing. Let's go to that Lord right now, all right? Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be with our friends, our brothers and sisters in Christ. 
with this body of believers here at Cherry Street Baptist Church. Lord, thank you for this body that you have given us to be a part of so that we can encourage one another and to help one another and to pray for one another. And Lord, we thank you for this particular body of Christ that is so faithful in being supportive. Lord, I pray now that you would be with uh, Judy McKnight as she is undergoing surgery this morning. I pray, God, that you would guide the physicians with that tender hand as they uh, deal with this tender surgery. Please, Lord, give her uh, recovery, give her freedom from the pain that she's been experiencing. Lord, I pray for Bunola Kincaid, who has experienced the loss of her brother, and uh, that you would minister to that family as only you can. Thank you for the grace of God that passes all understanding, but it, it's a grace that is sufficient for such a time as this. Bless us now, Lord, as we consider your words today from your holy scriptures. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, folks. You may be seated. So good to see you here today at the services of Cherry Street Baptist Church. We welcome you. We're so glad and delighted that you're in our services. Are, are there any people visiting today for the first time, or perhaps it's been a long time since you've been at Cherry Street? Would you just raise your hand and let us know where you're at? We're so delighted. God bless you folks. Keep your hand extended just a moment. We have some greeters that would like to give you a pen and just uh, thank you for coming and being part of our services. Please keep that pen as a reminder of your time with us. And we uh, relish the opportunity to get to meet you and talk to you and get to know you better. Uh, one thing you could do for us, both Cherry Street family as well as those who are visiting, in that seat back pocket in front of you, if you would just pull out one of these communication cards, would you please let us know you were here? We'd love to have a record of your visit. So just write down that you were in attendance today and we will uh, be happy to receive those cards. You can just drop the cards in the offering plate as they go by here in a few moments when we receive our morning offering, all right? Uh, on the back of the card, you'll see a place where you can ask questions about our church. It is one of our great joys to talk about our great church. So if you have questions about our church, please feel at liberty to write those questions down. Some of those questions may be personal questions, things that you would like to ask us because you're really, really serious about your eternal life. You're, you're concerned about your eternity. Maybe it's a serious question like, how do, I, how do I know I'm a Christian? Well, there's a place where you can check that box or you can just circle the C on the bottom where that alphabet code is. Just circle the C and we'll know that's your question. In some general way, you're asking, how, how can, do I know I'm a Christian? We'd love to show you what the Bible says about that. And we'd love for you to know for sure that you are a true child of God by becoming a true Christian. All right? Maybe you have a question about baptism. Circle the B. Maybe you have a question about membership. Circle the M. If you have just general questions about our church, circle the Q. Uh, maybe you have some circumstances in your life right now you'd like for us to pray about. We'd love to do that. There's a place where you can write a prayer request and we will share that with our church family. We'll pray. All right? So if that's you, please fill out the card. On the back of the card, fill those in, that information out. And again, we'll receive an offering here in just a moment. And uh, we'll thank you in advance for putting that in the offering plate as it goes by. Uh, on behalf of my family, I just wanted to say thank you to so many of you who have uh, shared your prayers and your condolences with our family at the home going of my dad last Monday. Uh, we had an uh, opportunity to get to Albuquerque, be there with the family, and uh, it was just a precious, precious time. And uh, they have a, a loving church like we do, and that church has ministered for many years to my family and uh, continued to do so. We had a beautiful funeral on Friday, and uh, so many of you have shared your uh, prayers with us, and it, we definitely felt your prayer support. Uh, it was a a beautiful service that honored a beautiful life. And so, thank you. All right, ushers, if you would please prepare. Uh, we'll just go ahead and have our uh, offering at this time. And we're going to have a word of prayer, ask the Lord to be honored with our gifts. And so, uh, Justin, would you please come and pray for 
uh, our service. Again, continue to pray for Judy McKnight as she's uh, going through a serious surgery even this morning, okay? Father, I thank you for uh, the chance we have to be here this morning and for everyone that's here in attendance and for uh, those that are visiting. I pray that uh, we'd be welcoming as a church this morning towards, towards all those that are here. And uh, we ask that uh, you be with us this morning as we open your word and to hear from, hear from you. And I pray that um, as we um, were talking about in Sunday school, that we would be not just hearers of the word, but doers this week. And um, as we go about um, our lives, thank you for... Um, this church and for everyone, um, the, all, all those that are um, taking part in teaching the young people all the way up uh, to the adults, and I uh, pray for this offering now that you'd use it to uh, further the gospel both here and around the world, and ask for um, just uh, encouragement and for um, those um, with um, with Brother Ray's family, um, just pray for um, his family and uh, for those. Um, uh, going through surgery, I know of a couple now um, in our church um, that are going about. Um, ask for your hand to be upon them, and thank you for what you do and what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen.
Will you please stand with me and join me in singing? There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none.
We are, um, this is the, the uh, first Sunday of December, isn't that crazy? And uh, a lot of things going on with that. Uh, Brother Ray mentioned, Jill, it is so good to see you. I can't believe I saw you singing in the choir up here. That's Mickey's sister, Jill. And glad to see you here and so many others of you. I appreciate you praying for my mom. She is in surgery right now. They've been trying to do the surgery since Wednesday. And uh, they, today was the day it was going to happen. And so went up to the hospital real early. And we'll go when the service is over. Jana and uh, Shad have been tag teaming out with me uh, while we're there. But thank you so much for praying for her. And uh, don't you love Brother Ray and, and Beth and Kevin and Jason and their families? And we've been praying for them this week. And uh, she would have liked to have been there. But, uh, man, we, we've been praying for you, Brother Ray. And uh, it, the, uh, this is not an easy time for their family. And I just want to encourage you uh, to pray for them and to continue to encourage them, if you would. Uh, we got word that uh, Mary Johnson's father passed away overnight. And so if you'd pray for uh, Mary Johnson as well. Doc Hafley. Uh, went home to be with the Lord this uh, just a few days ago, and uh, we're just getting connected uh, with them. We've had the service later on this week. Uh, Brother Ray mentioned Miss Bunola and uh, her uh, brother that went home to be with the Lord, and so there are just a lot of folks at this uh, this Thanksgiving time approaching Christmas that are going to deal with some issues of grief, and so. Uh, we would ask you to be much in prayer for those people. We have a grief share ministry at our church, and uh, it is exciting to see uh, what God is doing. They just finished out their um, season, if you will, that one of the uh, uh, thirteen-week uh, quarters that they that they do a grief share. It'll pick up again in a couple of months, and they'll do another session of that. And uh, we're excited. One of the the men who is um, uh, has been going to Grief Share, lost his wife a couple of years ago, and his name is Dick Pickard, and he is going. He, he is a, 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 uh, an, a an organist, and he is going, going to, just as a way of showing his appreciation and his love for Cherry Street and our ministry to him, uh, this coming Wednesday evening uh, before our regular church service. He is, I heard him in here the other day, he had that thing smoking. I mean, that, that pipe organ was making sounds. Uh, that, uh, it, that is an amazing and beautiful instrument. And uh, so Dick is going to play that on, from, on Wednesday evening from 5.30 until 6.15. He's got a, uh, it's just an organ recital, a way to say thank you. So uh, if you can get over here for the uh, Wednesday evening service, come a little bit early and uh, you will enjoy uh, that particular music. Now, we've been seeing Christmas uh, since about the middle of August in the uh, stores, and uh, Hallmark picked it up the 1st of October. Uh, th then Silver Dollar City got on board with Christmas uh, November the 1st, and uh, so this is December the 1st, and we're still conflicted. Uh, hey, John, Linda, how are you guys? Good to see you all this morning, too. We're kind of conflicted because, I mean, I'm, I love the Christmas music, the Christmas flavor. Uh, but, you know, one of the reasons we love to do that is because there's just not a lot of Thanksgiving holiday songs. You know, Over the River and Through the Woods, that's one I remembered when I was a kid. Uh, but I found one that I think is going to be a new Thanksgiving classic. It, it, now, this is not necessarily... Uh, it, it, you know, there's a lot of songs at Christmas that are not necessarily spiritual. Like chestnuts roasting on an open... I mean, that's not necessarily a spiritual song, is it? Well, this is going to be along that particular line. I haven't heard it recorded yet. I'm thinking about doing an album myself uh, and including this particular Thanksgiving song. Would you like to hear it this morning? I, I mean, it is, it, it's incredible. And uh, I, it, it, I kind of get choked up a little bit towards the end, and you'll understand. But, um, but it is quite an amazing song. It, it kind of goes like this. I have to, I'm still working on memorizing the words. The turkey popped out of the oven and rocketed into the air. It knocked every plate off the table and nearly demolished a chair. Wait, there's more. No, 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 there's more. 
It ricocheted into a corner and burst with a def deafening boom, then splattered all over the kitchen, completely obscuring the room. It stuck to the walls and the windows. It totally coated the floor. There was turkey attached to the ceiling where never was turkey before. Now, this is the part that really touches my heart here. It blanketed every appliance. It smeared every saucer and bowl. There wasn't a way I could stop it. That turkey was out of control. I scraped and I scraped with this pleasure and thought with chagrin as I mopped that I'd never again stuff a turkey with popcorn that had not been popped. <laughs> There's not one thing spiritual about that, but I thought it was kind of funny. Do you think that's going to be a hit, Brother Ray? Yeah, going to be a big hit. That's exactly right. Well, this morning I want us to talk about being thankful. Look at Revelation chapter 4, if you would, if you haven't already turned there. And uh, we'll read some verses in just a minute from Revelation uh, 4. There's an African proverb that says, Even the hen lifteth her head toward heaven when swallowing her grain. Think about that. Even a hen lifteth her head toward heaven when swallowing her grain. How sad it is that there are many who are daily recipients of multiplied blessings from the Lord, and yet they never lift their head in thanks to the God who gave them. William Law, in his book, A Serious Call to a Devout and Holy Life, wrote this, Would you know who is the greatest saint in the world? It is not he who prays most or fasts most, it is not he who gives alms most or is eminent for temperance, chastity, or justice, but it is he who always is thankful to God, who wills everything that God willeth, who receives everything as an instance of God's goodness, and has a heart always ready to praise God for it. God has been so good to every one of us. He's been so good to us. And he deserves nothing less than to find a thankful heart in every Christian. The Bible, especially the Psalms, encourages a, a thankful heart. Psalm 69 and verse 30 says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Psalm 95 verse 2, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Psalm 100 verse, verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be ye thankful unto him and bless his name. Today, I, I want to share with you what I believe the Bible teaches is the best way for us to express our gratitude towards the Lord. In Revelation chapter 4, we see unfolding before us a heavenly scene. When every saved person will be gathered around the throne of God with worship and praise and expressions of thanksgiving. Uh, if we, we begin reading in verse 1, After this I looked and behold... A door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that, was, uh, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, and the sight uh, like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now move down to verse 10, if you will, please. 
The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your love for us. And we ask you, God, to help us today to understand what it means to be thankful uh, to you. Lord, I pray in this moment of time when we are uh, so focused on so many other things that you would just uh, help us to bring into captivity every thought, help us to focus all of our heart and all of our mind uh, on who you are and what you've done for us Lord, I pray that you would create in every one of us a thankful, thankful heart today. And we'll praise you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. On, in our text, both in verse 4 and again in verse 10, the Bible speaks of crowns. Now these crowns speak of heavenly rewards that can be earned by the Christian. And so... This morning, I want you to see and understand that we can say thank you to the Lord by understanding three particular truths, three particular principles about these crowns from these scriptures. First of all, Jesus said over in Revelation chapter 22, so hold your finger here in chapter 4 and turn, if you will, over uh, to the last chapter of the book. Revelation chapter 22 and verse... Verse 12, where Jesus says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I want you to see this morning, uh, the first point that we need to understand is that if we're going to give thanks to the Lord the way we ought to give thanks to the Lord, we we need to understand that it's going to be about labor that is rendered to him. The Lord spoke of his return and the rewards that he would bring with him in chapter 22 and verse 12. The word reward that he used is a word that simply means a person being paid for the work they had done. Jesus Jesus here explained that these rewards would be given to every man according as his work shall be there in verse 12. The Lord was speaking of a heavenly payday, if you will. It's important for us to know that there will be no crown, that there will be no rewards without labor, without work. The crowns of our text represent the work that a Christian has done for God. And so I want you to see and understand what this work is. First of all, you need to see that it is a spiritual work. A work that is done for God is service that is rendered unto the Lord. It's a work that is done by the pastor when he preaches the word, by the missionary on the mission field as he tells the wonderful story of God's word. It it is a a work that is rendered uh, by the Sunday school teacher standing in the class, by the grow partner and the soul winner sitting in a home. It's the work done by church members who fulfill various functions and roles in the church, who teach Bible studies, disciple new believers, sing in the choir, play the instruments, serve as greeters, take care of children or babies, run the soundboard or media equipment, work in the uh, the security team. It, It is work that is done by those who are found on their knees praying. It's work that is done by somebody coming to an altar with an open Bible, showing somebody how they can know Christ as Savior. It is a work that is done in all kinds of different ways. But in all those cases, it's a work that is done for the Lord. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. That word accepted means well-pleasing. It is work that's done with the purpose of pleasing the Lord, of obeying him and bringing glory to his name. And by the way, if your work is done, if your service is done, is done to draw attention to yourself, to make people think more highly of you, then you're not serving the Lord. In fact, 
Somebody said it this way, and I kind of like this. Prison singing is better than someone who is trying to showcase their talent. You say, what is prison singing? I'll tell you. It's the kind of singing that's behind a few bars and missing the key. <laughs> Don't you like that? But I would rather hear music that's behind a few bars and, and a little off key than I would for somebody to be standing up and showing off to bring glory to themselves because that's not what it's all about. Julie, thank you for the way you sang that song this morning. It is about him. If we preach, if we teach, if we serve so that people will pat us on the back, we're not serving the Lord. We are self-serving. We must do what we do with the single objective of pleasing the Lord and bringing glory to his name. Our work is not a selfish work. It's a spiritual work. But let me also point out, secondly, that this work is a specific work. It's a specific work. Still in Revelation 22 and in verse 12, every Christian has a personal, specific work that we're to do for the Lord. Notice the emphasis Jesus placed on the specific work there in Revelation 22 and verse 12. He said that the works will be, uh, the rewards will be according as his work shall be. Note the words there his work. His work. There is a particular work that God has for every one of us. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians 6 and verse 4, But let every man prove his own work, and then he shall have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Every Christian is to serve the Lord. And there's a specific work that each of us has been given by the Lord. There is a work that he's given to me. There's a work that he's given to you. And our roles in this body, they're so different. They vary from person to person, from member to member. The work that God has for you may be different than mine. But nevertheless, God has a very specific work that he wants you to do. And so because that, all that is true, because there is, uh, if we're going to be the kind of thankful people that God wants us to be, and, and we're going to, if we're going to understand how our thanksgiving is to be shown ultimately to him, then we've got to understand that there is work involved, labor uh, that will be rendered. And if that's the case, there are two, Christi two questions that every qu Christian should ask themselves. The first question is, do I know what it is that God wants me to do? Do I know what it is that God wants me to do? You know, sometimes it's a lot of us get to thinking about uh, what it is the Lord wants us to do. Sometimes it, it becomes just plain old obvious. If there are chairs that need to be moved, that's something that, that if you can find your hands, whatsoever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Is that pleasing to the Lord? Yeah. Sometimes knowing what to do is as simple, is, is as, simple as looking around and seeing what needs to be done. Do you know what God wants you to do? But there's a second question that you need to ask. Am I doing God's will for my life? Am I doing it? You say, well, I know what it is I'm supposed to do. God called me to, to work with kids a long time ago. God called me to do this. God wants me to do that. I know that I'm supposed to be singing in the choir. I know the Lord has done this. He's done this in my life. And I know I'm supposed to be involved in this way or that way. And I'm going to. I'm going to. The question is not what are you going to do. It's not what did you used to do. The question is, am I doing God's will in my life right now? Somebody has said that, that a Christian's place is on the front line, not the sideline. Another said that we're pardoned from sin, but we're, we're not excused from service. To say thank you to the Lord, the first point we must understand is that before there are crowns and a heavenly payday, there is first labor that is rendered. Second thing that I want you to see this morning is there is a life that is reviewed. There's life that is reviewed. Again, we're, our text is Revelation chapter 4. But let me ask you to, to hold your finger there again and turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we'll begin reading in verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 13. Here's what it says. 
Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. The Apostle Paul here is describing a day when our life will undergo an intense review by the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 13, Paul talked about the day. What day is he referring to? He's speaking of the day when we all stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. This will be a time when every Christian will stand before the Lord and their life will undergo uh, his particular review. And it's, it's very important that we understand that this is a judgment seat of a review, if you will, of Christians. Now, there is a judgment for believers, or for unbelievers, I should say. Uh, over in Revelation uh, chapter 20 and in verse 12, the Bible says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell were del delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is that judgment for those who are unbelievers. And you notice it talked about their works too. But here it's talking about their sin, uh, their sinful works. Those works, we don't have to worry about that. Aren't you glad that Jesus, when he died on the cross and paid for your sin, that your sin is under the blood. They're washed away. You are forgiven and on your way to heaven if you know Jesus as your Savior. So you need to understand there's a difference. In our text this morning, he's talking about Christians, and he's talking about uh, this review, if you will, at the judgment seat of Christ of our works which were rendered uh, for the Lord. And so all Christians need to take note that Paul made it clear in 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 13 that every man and that we must all, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10, face this review. There's not one Christian who's going to be excluded. Everyone will have their life reviewed. Well, what is this review all about? It's about our works. And I want you to see, first of all, our works revealed in verse 13... Paul describes this revealing in four statements. First, he says, our works will be made manifest. Now, that word manifest means to declare or to make, I'm sorry, means to, to make public or, or apparent. And then second, he says that the day shall declare it. That word declare means to make it plain. Third, he says that our works shall be revealed by fire. That word mean, revealed there means to take the cover off. And finally, he says, the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. That word try means to be put to the test. Each statement speaks of how our works will be revealed. Again, I want you to understand that, that at this judgment seat, it's not our sin, but our service that's the focus. The judgment seat of Christ is not to reveal whether or not we're saved. We wouldn't be standing at the judgment seat of Christ if we weren't saved. The purpose of that judgment seat of Christ is to reveal what we did after we were saved. It's a time when we will all stand before the Lord and give an account about our service. Now, in light of this future appearing before the Lord Jesus Christ, it's pretty hard for me to understand why so many Christians just plain old fail to have a desire to serve God. They know there's coming a day when they're going to have to face the Lord Jesus about serving and living for him. And yet they never get involved in the work for, of the Lord in any capacity whatsoever. Daniel Webster, the noted American statesman on being asked what the greatest thought he had ever entertained was, answered this way. The greatest thought that has ever entered my mind 
is that one day I will have to stand before a holy God and give account of my life. Our works will be revealed. Not only do we see our works revealed, but we also see our works rewarded. Look at verse 14 there in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He says, If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Now for those who have served God, motivated by their love for Jesus Christ, there will be a reward for their service. These rewards consist of crowns to be given to those who earn them. The Bible speaks of different crowns that are going to be given to Christians by the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 19 here, the Bible speaks of the crown of rejoicing, a crown that is given to the soul winner, to those who bring others to Christ. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8, the Bible speaks of a crown of righteousness, a crown given to those who love and long for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter 5 and verse 4, there's a crown of glory that will be given to those who faithfully teach and preach God's word. In 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 25, the Bible speaks of an incorruptible crown that will be given to those who run a good race for the Lord and live disciplined, disciplined lives for Him. In James chapter 1 and verse 12, we find the crown of life that is given for, to those who are faithful to God in spite of great tribulation and trial, pain and suffering that they faced in their life. And so this morning, I would ask you, what are your prospects for a heavenly crown? Are you living for Jesus? Are you being what he wants you to be as a Christian? Are you doing what he wants you to do? There's going to come a day when our life will be reviewed for the purpose of being rewarded. Now, some of you may be thinking this morning, what does this have to do with saying thank you to the Lord? Well, let's go back to our text now in Revelation chapter 4. And I want to share with you one final thought, and I think you'll understand. You see, there's labor that is rendered and life that is reviewed in which we receive our crowns. But finally, there is the Lord that is revered. The Lord that is revered. Notice with me again verse 10. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they they are and were created. These 24 elders are representative of saved people. This is a scene of worship and praise and thanksgiving. It gives us a glimpse of what heaven's going to be like. It gives us a particular response on the part of believers that will occur when this heavenly scene unfolds. Notice first that it's a scene of overflowing hearts. You see, the focus of the heavenly scene is we found in verse 2. And we see that there is one who sat on the throne in heaven. The one that John saw on the throne is the Lord God Almighty. And John saw around the throne 24 seats on which the 24 elders sat. And he saw four beasts circling around the throne. And he describes them in verse 8 as each of them having six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within. And they rest not not day and night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. John describes how the 24 elders observed the actions of the four beasts. And these 24 elders joined them in worshiping the one who is on the throne. It's a scene of overflowing hearts. The glory and the majesty of the Lord sitting on the throne fills their hearts with praise that overflows in worship and exaltation. These 24 elders demonstrate for us what our chief occupation will be in heaven. Throughout eternity, we are going to worship the Lord sitting on his throne. Now, if worship makes you feel uncomfortable now, you're really going to be uncomfortable when it comes time to go to heaven. Because in heaven, we will always worship the Lord. When you walk through the gates of heaven...
Can you see his face for the first time? The one who loved you so much that he left that place and came here and subjected himself to all that he subjected himself to? When you see his eyes, when you hear his voice, when you see the nail prints in his hand and the scars on his brow, and you realize that he did it for you, you will worship and adore and thank him. For what he has done for you. And after a hundred years have passed. You're still going to worship him. And a thousand years after that. You'll still be crying. Thou art worthy O Lord. To receive glory and honor and power. And a million years later you'll be standing. Still worshiping him. We'll never cease to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Contrary to what many think, we're not going to be all that focused on mansions or streets of gold. All we're going to sing about is Jesus. Throughout the eons of eternity, we're going to be worshiping Jesus because he loved us first. Because we don't deserve to be there if it were not for him. We will that, at that point know what happened to all those who rejected Christ. We will understand the awfulness of hell, the, the, the terribleness of our own sin, the wickedness of our own circumstances, and the great length at which Christ came to this earth to pay the price for our sins and we will only be able to fall down and say thank you praise you you are worthy only you are worthy only you are worthy we will be overflowing in our hearts as well but John not only described overflowing hearts he also describes overwhelmed hearts, people who were overwhelmed heart with God's love and grace and mercy and glory and majesty, they are so overwhelmed, in fact, they are so moved that they take their crowns, the crowns that they were given at the judgment seat of Christ, the crowns that represented their service that was done to the Lord in this life. And remember, we're recognizing in that moment that without Him, we could have done none of those things. Without Him, I could do nothing. Without Him, I'd surely fail. Without him I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Without him, we're nothing. Without him, we have nothing to present to him. And now, these crowns that have been given to these faithful people who live for the Lord and serve the Lord, these rewards that are given at the judgment seat of Christ are offered by hearts that are overwhelmed to the one who sits on the throne. And they take them off and they place them before his feet as an expression of gratitude and thankfulness for all that he's done for them. Imagine this great scene in your mind's eye this morning. As saint after saint... From every age, approach the throne. They take the crown off their head and they lay it at the feet of Jesus, saying, as verse 11 said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they were, they are and were created. Imagine 
Imagine in your mind's eye this morning Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, Peter and Paul who walk to the throne, kneel, take the, their place, remove their crowns, and lay them at the feet of Jesus. And Moody and Spurgeon and Sunday and Judson and Carey and a host of great saints throughout all history will come. Many of whose names are unknown. Preachers and missionaries, Sunday school teachers, soul winners, prayer warriors from every walk of life, from every race and nation, coming in a constant stream, weeping as they lay their crowns at his feet in gratitude for what he's done for them. And now, as you think about this heavenly picture, where do you fit in? Can you see yourself in the heavenly throng? Casting your crowns at his feet? Do you see yourself there? If you received a crown, you'll see yourself there. Can you imagine being present at this heavenly scene as the saints of all ages come one by one by the throne and and cast their crowns at his feet? And yet because of what you didn't do in this life, You were saved. Oh, yes, you were saved. Yet, as Jude says, yet so is by fire. And yet you have no crown to cast at his feet. How terrible would it be to come to that place and stand there as a spectator and not a participator. When the full realization of what Jesus has done for you and how much he loved you sweeps over you. Can you imagine having nothing to cast at his feet? The point of the message this morning is simply this. The greatest way we will ever show our gratitude to the Lord is to live for him now and serve him in this life so that one day we can place at his feet a crown to express our gratitude. That's how we can say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Charles Luther, born in 1847, was a journalist. Later, he would become an evangelist and and ordained as a Baptist preacher in 1886. He wrote about 25 hymns, at least the, the text of the hymns. In 1877, he heard... A pastor, Upham, relate the story of a young man who was about to die. This young man had only been a Christian for a month. And he was filled with sorrow because he had so little time to serve the Lord. Pastor Upham said that this young man cried out, I am not afraid to die. Jesus saves me now. But must I go to him empty-handed? This incident prompted Charles Luther to write the hymn entitled, Must I go and empty-handed, thus my dear Redeemer meet? Not one day of service give him, lay no trophy at his feet? Must I go and empty-handed, must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty-handed go? Not at death I shrink or falter, for my Savior saves me now. But to meet Him empty-handed, thought of that now clouds my brow. Must I go and empty-handed, must I meet my Savior go? Not one soul with which to greet Him, must I empty-handed go? Oh, the years in sinning wasted. Could I but recall them now, I would give them to my Savior. To His will, I'd gladly bow. Must I go and empty-handed? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet Him. Must I empty-handed go? Oh, you saints, be earnest. Up and work while yet tis day. 
Ere the night of death or take thee, strive for souls while still you may. Must I go and empty-handed? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty-handed go? There's a time when we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And when we do, we'll receive rewards done in this body with a pure heart for the things that we ways that we've served the Lord. And one day, the scene that was revealed to John, that revelation that we read about in chapter 4, and around the throne, the saints of all the ages will be casting crowns at the feet of Jesus. Will you be saying thank you, Lord, and casting your crowns of service at his feet? Maybe today, Christian friend, this is a day that you say, I, I really want to say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. Remember, this is a heavenly scene. This is something that takes place with those who've already gone to heaven. Will you even be there? Only if you've trusted Christ will you, will you have a part in that wonderful heavenly eternity. What a, what a time it's going to be. But if you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to know that He died on the cross to pay for your sin. He does not want you to go to hell. He wants you to go to heaven. And He stands ready today. His arms are open wide. He says, Him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. As many as receive Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, he will receive you into his family this very morning. You can be forgiven of your sins. Spend eternity with him in heaven. That's his choice. That's what he wants for you. That's why he came. That's why he lived a perfect life. That's why he died. That's his choice for you. But he's left it up to you. You have to receive the gift of eternal life. And you can do that today. Would you bow your heads with me? How many of you would say, Dennis, I, I am saved. I know I'm saved. And I'm a member of Cherry Street Baptist Church. I know I'm going to heaven and I'm a member of this church. Hold it up really, really high. A lot of folks like that. God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to know that there are people... Uh, just like it's happened since last Sunday, there have been people who've come to know Christ. They got saved on Sunday and since then, and I'm so thankful for that. Maybe you're here this morning, and you're like so many of our church family who's out visiting family and scattered around. Uh, maybe you're here, and you've come into this town, or maybe you live in Springfield and surrounding areas. You say, Preacher, I'm, I'm not a member of Cherry Street Baptist Church, but I'm a member of the family of God. I've trusted him as my savior. I'm not a member here, but I know I'm one of God's kids. Would you just hold your hand up real high? I've trusted him as my savior. No question about that. Thank you so much. If you live in Springfield or the surrounding areas and, and you don't have a church home, you need one. You need a place where you can serve the Lord and be involved and, 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 and make a difference while you're here serving the Lord. That's what we've been talking about this morning. Christian friend, if you need a church home, would you pray a, a prayer, something like this? Lord, what would you have me to do about my church membership? And if the Holy Spirit of God speaks to you, we'd invite you to come and our pastors will be here ready for you this morning. We'll be so excited to have you as part of our church family. Maybe this morning you say, preacher, I'm one of God's kids. I've acknowledged that. And the truth is, I really haven't been living for the Lord. I, my life hasn't been counting for Him. I, 
when you talk about crowns, it seems like my work's all going to be tried by fire and I'll suffer loss that way. Preacher, I really know I need to get busy for the Lord. I, I maybe, maybe you've even been pretending. Maybe you've been serving, but your, but your motive has been wrong. Whatever the circumstances, you just said, Preacher, my service hasn't been what I, what I know it ought to be. And I know he wants me to serve him. And I know he wants me to be faithful. Preacher, would you pray for me this morning? I really want my life to count for him now and for eternity. I want to make a difference for him today with my life today. Would you slip up your hand and say, Preacher, that's where I'm at. Pray for me this morning. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you. Others, pray for me. I really want my life to count for the Lord. It hasn't been. Yes, sir. It hasn't been like I want it to. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. It really hasn't been like I want it to be. But, Pastor, will you pray for me this morning? I, I really. Yes, sir. I see it. I'll pray for you. Anybody else pray for me? I'm not sure. I, I, yes, sir. Thank you. I will pray for you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'll pray for you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Dennis, listen, you talked about heaven and I'm not sure I'm forgiven. I'm not sure that heaven is my home, but I want to be sure about that. I do not want to go to that awful place you read about. I I want to go to heaven when I die. Would you pray for me about that today? I I want to know that. I I want to be sure about that. Just slip your hand up for a moment. I I want to pray for you. I'd love to pray for you. Yes, ma'am, I sure will. Yes, sir, thank you. I'll pray for you. Somebody else, pray for me. I want to be sure about that. I don't want to miss anybody. Anybody else, pray for me. I I want to be sure about that. Yes, ma'am, thank you. I will pray for you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Let's stand to our feet. Lord Jesus, we love you this morning. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, Lord, that we can live for you every day. We thank you, Lord, that as we serve you, that our service to you will afford us the opportunity to be thankful to you. Lord, one day we'll cast our crowns at your feet. Lord, I pray that today we would examine our hearts, examine our service. Lord, there's some folks here today who need a church home. I pray, Holy Spirit, that if you want them as part of this church, that they would come right now and that uh, we'd be so excited to have them as part of this church. They come and meet one of our pastors who will be right here ready to to wait for them. Lord, there are people in this place today who've said they're your kids, but their service really hasn't been counting for you like they want it to. There's some things in their life. There's some struggles that they have. There's some burdens that they're carrying. There's some things that obstruct them. Lord, I pray that today they would come and they would lay all those things at your feet. You said for us to come and cast our care upon you because you care for us. And so, Lord, I pray that they would come at the invitation time. And, Lord, this will be the beginning day of a a life of service for them. And, Lord, there's some folks in this place today who do not know you as Savior. They're not sure if they died today. They're going to heaven. Lord, I pray that they would come join many others who will be coming meet one of the pastors who will have somebody take the Bible and show them how they can know for sure that heaven is their eternal home may no one leave as the invitation is extended may no one go away without Jesus is our prayer today and we'll thank you for what you're going to do the Holy Spirit spoken to you this morning for any reason my dear friend would you come at this invitation time right now you come as we sing I have decided